Are you on Social Security? Are you on Medicare? Are you on a fixed income? We just received some very updated news, very, very exciting news just a few hours ago that we had to bring to your attention. It affects those primarily on a fixed income like Social Security, SSI, SSDI, disabled, VA survivors, those on Medicare. Yes, we're going to be talking about things that are affecting you on a daily basis. There are some changes that have just been made. Yes, some very, very exciting news that we had to bring to your attention. This video is full of details and updates of things that just come out a few hours ago. Yes, we've got a ton of news for you in this video all the way until the end. If you're on a fixed income, if you're on Social Security, if you're on Medicare, then you're going to want to watch all the way until the end. We have some very, very exciting news, so let's dive in. Hey, what is up, YouTube? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I love you. Appreciate you. Make sure to join the family by hitting that subscribe button and that like button for a chance to win a free $25 gift card that we're going to be doing a drawing this Friday. Last week, Terry Hampton won. Yes, it was exciting on the live stream to see that someone actually won the gift. We gave them the money instantly. It was amazing. And you could be the winner this Friday. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for your chance to win. So if you're on a fixed income, if you're on Medicare, we've got a ton of news detailed right here in this video just for you, specifically targeting those on a fixed income. Insolvency is on the horizon for Social Security, Medicare funds. This is what experts are saying, that these changes may help. And yes, this news just come out two hours ago. We had to bring you this most up-to-date news, so let's dive in. The latest projections for Social Security and Medicare show two of the three major trust funds may be insolvent in the next decade. Lawmakers may consider a host of changes to resolve those issues from raising taxes, cutting benefits, or both. But not only that, they're wanting to pour more money into your monthly check, like the $200 monthly increase that adds up to $2,000. $400 a year, a monthly check of extra $200 for those on Social Security, SSI, SSDI, VA, survivors, those that are disabled. Yes, some extra money for you would be amazing. Experts weigh in on what changes would actually make their wishes come true. Social Security and Medicare face an uncertain future. Based on new annual reports from the program's trustees that were released last week. Insolvency is near the horizon, said Mark Godwin, senior vice president of the committee for a responsible federal budget. During a panel hosted by the nonpartisan nonprofit organization on Tuesday, two of the three major trust funds are projected to be insolvent in the next decade. So we understand that many of you are on a fixed income. Many of you are depending on that monthly check. So what is going to be the answer to fix the issue? So like I was saying, they're wanting to boost up Social Security payments. Number one thing that they really want to change is they want to reduce elderly poverty through Social Security. They want to make sure you are getting out of poverty and you're not having to live literally week to week, month to month, struggling whether to put gas or put food on your table. The research finds that 37 percent of adults who are 65 and over would have incomes below the official poverty line with social security benefits and it's time to change. Many of you right here on this channel have said you do not make enough. Many of you have said I'm going to lose my car, I'm going to lose my house because I do not make enough each month to pay my bills, to keep a roof over my head. And they understand that. That's why they're going to do everything they can to reduce the elderly poverty through Social Security benefits. They understand and they've done a test to see that research finds 37, almost 38% of adults 65 and older are officially below the poverty line, which is, it's not right. It's not good. For the past 20 years, there has been one go-to minimum benefit proposal that includes a sliding scale based on years of work, but reducing poverty through and outside of Social Security beyond a sliding scale minimum benefit may be a better approach. There is interest in this across the political spectrum. Everyone's wanting to come together to figure out how to boost up your monthly payment, which is very, very exciting news for those on a fixed income, those on Social Security and Medicare. 
Number two, they want to cap the maximum Social Security benefit. The maximum benefit for a single person retiring at a normal retirement age this year is 43000 based on the trustee's report. This is well above the poverty threshold of 21000 he noted. Moreover, they want to make sure that every single person that is in the program has a safety net. In other words, if they have to raise it up, which they're talking about, that by 2030, this is going to be raised up to $60,000. Yes, $43,000 base right now, and by 2030, it's going to be around $59,000, $60,000. Those benefits are far beyond what anyone needs to stay out of poverty, he said. Such a change may be a modest fix that would reduce 10 to 15% of the program's long-term funding gap. So literally getting you more money, increasing it so that way you are not struggling. You are not having to worry about what food you're going to eat, gas you're going to put in your car. One of our viewers here on the channel said, hey, my budget was good until my tires went out. I had to buy two new tires and guess what? My budget went out the window. So number three, this is something that really is going to help millions and millions of those on a fixed income. They want to make Medicare spending more efficient. They want to help you in the process, making sure that you get the assistance that you need. One of the factors that has helped reduce Medicare spending in recent years is the shift of a hip and knee replacements from inpatient hospital procedures to outpatient and ambulance settings. So the development comes after a regulatory restrictions that required those services to provide in patient settings, this is were lifted. These are the types of flexibilities and innovations that we should be seeking throughout the Medicare program. The savings not only help those that are Medicare Part A, hospital insurance solvency, but it also may contribute to the fiscal sustainability of the program as a whole. The whole goal is to help those on Medicare by making it more efficient. The goal is to make sure that those on a Social Security, they're getting a higher benefit. It's also reducing the poverty that is running through the elderly of those on a fixed income. So again, guys, they've got some great changes that is literally going to help those out on a fixed income. Some very, very exciting news. I'm telling you, I loved it. I had to come and share this with you because it was amazing. But guys, guess what? We're doing a giveaway this Friday. If you haven't had a chance yet, Make sure to hit that subscribe button for your chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card. We do a drawing every Friday. Who knows? Your name might be the one we draw. Thank you again so much for watching. Make sure to be safe. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned because I've got more videos on the way. And until next time, I'm John Miro. Peace.